William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We are here at the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Board Meeting, the agency known as DART to Dallas, Texas residents. As a service to the Dallas community, we plan to cover DART board meetings from gavel to gavel. Public comments are required to keep DART board aware of issues close to the ridership that they may not get through other resources. Good evening. It's uh, 636 on August 11th, 2015, and this meeting of the DART of uh, the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Board of Directors is called to order. Our first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the prior meeting. Any objections, corrections, additions to the minutes as presented? Move approval. Second. That being the case, ordered and uh, entered as presented. Um, the we have a PAG report. Here. Well, hello. Pardon me? You haven't done this before? Well, you're doing great so far. <laughs> I don't generally do podiums for obvious reasons. Well, would you like to step to the side? That's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Leah Gardner with Ability Connection Texas, and I'm pleased to represent the PEG this evening. And I am very happy to have my foster son, Philip, with me, who Hello. is a paratransit rider. Uh, the PEG, the Paratransit Accessibility and Advisory Group, met last on, on July 17th, 2015. We recognized and celebrated the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act with a breakfast. Key performance indicators were shared with the group. The most valuable drivers were recognized for the summer, and uh, the Department of Transportation final rule and clarification were shared by Doug Douglas, which helped clarify quite a few previously somewhat gray areas regarding prayer transit services. MV Transportation also did two presentations on how to check where a ride is used for paratransit using the online site dart.thebus.mobi and how to schedule a ride using the online paratransit.dart.org. And Philip and I both use that routinely, as does my agency. David Erleicher from DART also provided an update to the level boarding project underway for the train stations. We were given an opportunity to go around the room and express concerns, share compliments, and ask questions. And then the meeting adjourned. Thank you for your service. And that was an excellent report. I want to thank you. Thank you. And thank your son for his, for, for his ridership. We have some special recognitions for the most valuable drivers um, for the summer of 2015 and um, special recognition to uh, paratransit operator Jimmy Grant and Doug you're, you're going to be handling this? Yes sir. Okay. Good evening. Uh, we have three honorees. Oh. The first one now. I think there's four. <laughs> we have three honorees tonight. Uh, the first is the most valuable driver on the van side, and he is Stevie Wade. Operator Stevie Wade has been with the DART Paratransit program since November 19, uh, 2013. He has an exemplary record with no complaints, no accidents, and no unexcused absences. <coughs> he is always prepared to work and is willing to tackle any challenges that come his way. Stevie has excellent customer service skills and is a big hit with his passengers and coworkers alike. On April 25th, 2015, Stevie noticed uh, smoke coming from the engine compartment of his vehicle. He quickly found a safe place to pull over he unloaded his two, -wheel, his two wheelchair passengers and moved them to a safe place. Mr. Wade followed procedure and contacted the dispatch department, who in turn contacted the fire and rescue department and DART police, along with the supervision and the maintenance department. All departments were instrumental in minimizing the potential fire damage and ensuring that the safety of the passengers were 
First, operators Wade quick actions avoided what could have become a very serious situation. We salute Operator Wade and we're happy to name him the DART MV Most Valuable Driver for 2015 and he will receive a check for $150. He's already received his plaque and he will also have that matched by MV Transportation. Congratulations. Thank you, very, thank you very much for your service, sir. Our next honoree is Yellow Cab's most valuable driver, and his name is Michael Cadane. Hey. How are you doing? Fine, sir. How are you? Good. Michael Cadane began his career here in Dallas with Yellow Cab in June of 2013. Previously, he had served in Houston's Yellow Cab Paratransit Division. From the very beginning of his service in 2013, on-time performance for his service has averaged 96.2% each month. And over time, he has received 28 commendations from the customers he services. Here are a few of the comments from some of his riders. He is very reliable and very courteous to everyone who comes, who gets into his vehicle. He is a great driver. Another comment. We cannot thank him enough for averting what could have been a very serious incident for my father. My father had no idea where he was and, uh, and driver Cadane stayed with him until we arrived. Thanks to his awareness, my father is still a rider today after his stroke. Another comment, kudos to the driver. I was standing in the cold and he took the initiative to wait uh, for the center to open letting us sit in the warm van. We need more thoughtful people like him in the world. Michael demonstrates the importance of being safe, courteous, and applies customer service skills uh, at all times to our customers. Please join us in congratulating operator Michael Cadane as the taxi most valuable driver for the, 20, uh, so the summer of 2015, and he too will receive a check in the amount of $150 from DART matched by MV Transportation for $150. Thank Congratulations. Our final honoree tonight is a special one. On July 26, we celebrated the 25th, uh, 25th anniversary of the ADA, a milestone in and of itself. However, in November, a paratransit operator will celebrate 35 years as a paratransit operator in Dallas. <laughs> Tonight, just in commemoration of the ADA, but most importantly, in recognizing 35 years of service, paratransit service in Dallas, we're recognizing Jimmy Grant, and this is a Lifetime Achievement Award for 35 years of continuous service. Mr. Grant began his transportation career serving both the city of Dallas and its surrounding communities in November 1981. Jimmy is number one on our MV driver slash uh, ATU seniority list. And he uh, ranks ahead of everybody else by at least nine years. And he's the most experienced mobility management driver in our system by continuous time served. Uh, Mr. Grant has been here since the very beginning. He, worked, he has worked for every contractor uh, since the creation of paratransit. <laughs> He's worked for contractors that many of us have never even heard of, but uh, starting with Care Car, Ready Ride, Mayflower, 
Crawford Technical Services. You have to go way back to know any of those. Uh, TCT, ACT Vancom, Veolia Transportation, MV Transportation. Mr. Grant continues to be the example of DART's five-star customer service. He cares for his riders and strives to deliver the best that he can. Mr. Grant has an excellent safety record, always comes to work on time, and never calls off, supporting endless and he also has endless commendations, endless commendations. Please, uh, he's, he's a very quiet man, by the way. Very quiet, he's very humble. He's always serving with excellence. Uh, we feel very honored to recognize him for 35 years of service as we celebrate 25 years of the ADA. Please join me in congratulating, honoring, and recognizing Mr. Jimmy Grant for his 35 years of service. There's something special about 35 years. So um, he's not receiving $150 a night. Uh, from DART, he's receiving $350. And MV outdid us tonight. They are matching our $300 plus. I mean, our $350 plus. They're giving him $500. Uh, Mr. Grant. Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, hi. <laughs> One day you may retire and you may be a passenger in one of the vehicles. I, I wouldn't want you as a backseat driver. <laughs> Thank you very much. In addition to uh, the checks that we've already mentioned, he's receiving this beautiful plaque, recognizing again his 35 years of service. Thanks again. Registered public speakers. Uh, the vice chair, Ms. Wilkins, will um, read the statement for public speaker. Public comments. General public comments will be allowed at the beginning of each DART board meeting for a total of 30 minutes. And again, at the end of the meeting, when the 30 minute period does not accommodate all persons who have signed up to speak. Individuals who have addressed the board in the past 30 days will be recognized to speak during the public comment period at the end of the meeting. During the public comment period, board members may not interact with the speakers or other board members by asking questions or offering their own comments. Members of the public are reminded that their behavior during DART board meetings is governed by the DART board code of conduct for citizens, news media, and visitors. Personal attacks, impertinent and slanderous remarks, and boisterous conduct will not be allowed. Each speaker will have three minutes to address the board. The green light on the podium will indicate that you can begin speaking. The yellow light indicates that you have one minute remaining. And the red light indicates that your time has expired. And the first speaker, Mr. Chair. Uh, and the first uh, speaker is um, Ms. Cece Robertson. <clears throat> Good evening. Hello. I'd like to address about the 59 mile. Uh, you, we got a good bus service on weekend, but Monday through Friday, we got six people back the bus, and then they got to work at 9 o'clock. And that bus needs to start running at least about 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. Because we ain't got a good bus service during the weekday. So uh, I told them I'd come down here and I'd speak for them. I used to come down and talk to all, about everybody else, but I want I'm about to do, do, do a little better. I want the 59 to start running at Rose Park Station at 11 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock. 
Monday through Friday, because that, that's the only time we ain't, got, we ain't got no good service. And that's all I got to say. Uh, I talked down here talk to them about that and see, see what y'all say. Thank you very much. Um, um, yes, Ms. Robertson, Mr. Plesko is here. He's waving his hand in the back if you'd like to discuss this with him further. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. William, Mr. William Dockeray. Oh, that's you. <laughs> okay. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. William Dockery. Mr. Strauss and the board, thank you. I don't normally speak uh, except uh, when something is really personally involved me, but it involves more than me today. Um, Last Sunday, I put in an extra two hours at the radio station, which I'm affiliated with. I found out my um, heart is little or none, but I managed to complete the two-hour uh, station, which put me on a normal schedule. But I had planned for this two-hour extra time by looking at, by checking the stanchions, or whatever you call them, where we put the schedules for me to go places. The bus 26 picked me up right on time. I only had 10 minutes to wait. Uh, let me interject something here. I found out five years ago I can only take 20 minutes of direct sunlight without <laughs> going into heat stroke. So I very, I, I, I miser my time in the heat. We're not even in the real heat, Texas heat yet. So I've got 10 minutes in my heat time. I arrive on time to pick up the next bus. Now the first uh, page that you've got there in front of you is a picture I took this morning of the uh, 409 bus schedule. I don't know if you can see if you got a copy, but I tried to highlight the uh, 457 arrival time for that evening uh, that it promises me that a bus will arrive or depart at that time. Unfortunately, I don't know what's wrong with the schedule because no bus shows up. In fact, after I checked your computer schedules, which are printed before you as well, one south, one north, I thought maybe the North one got posted for the south one, and I have no idea what's wrong with the schedule. But I end up another 27 minutes into that heat schedule. My brain is fried. It also means I'm on my way to the death bed. I got home, I managed two hours to get me home, and my partner, uh, I slept in this bed for two days while he slept in his wheelchair, and I normally take care of him. So I should really title this little speech, uh, uh, Death By, uh, or Murder By, Misinformation. I don't know what's wrong with the schedule. I, from the people who have talked to me, uh, they always complain that the, that the bus is always late, it's never on time. So this schedule has been wrong for a while. I don't know, since this is at the medical area, I would think I would take real good attention to make sure these are correct, because people like myself cannot handle the heat, or they just came out of the Parkland Hospital, and they did get me to stay out of the heat as well. So that's about it, gentlemen. I'm going to bring this to your attention. I assume you will take care of it, and I'll be more than happy to speak to anybody you want me to speak to after the meeting. Thank you. Would you talk with Mr. Todd Plesko? He's got his hand up there. All right. He's, we'll do. He, 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 Thank you. Thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. William Dockery, board members, ladies and gentlemen, I'm disappointed. I, there we go. You getting a little louder there? There we go. I'm disappointed. Uh, the last time I talked to you, you all gave me some great attention about a, a, a misprint on a bus schedule. And uh, where, we, where I end up getting very overheated one day. Uh, it's been six weeks, and this, the picture that you have in front of you was, a take, was taken uh, earlier this afternoon. It's still the same schedule. Um, I've uh, also on the other side, I think you'll find the printed schedule for that particular stanchion that's, that is printed by your computer on DART. 
So I don't know what to say. It's just um, things haven't got done. Thank you very much. Did you speak with uh, Mr. Brunel? Kevin Brunel. Okay, we'll do Here, would you like this to remind you? No, I got it. Oh, okay. got it. They gave me a copy back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. James Harris. I'm here tonight, I have filed complaints at the PRB against the Defined Benefit Retirement Committee. And those are the answers. Uh, the that was the response from the uh, PRB, and that's uh, a response to the PRB from Peter Brennan and some of the uh, complaints. Uh, first of all, Mr. Brennan said that uh, he could find none of this in the plan document. If you read the plan document, you'll find it on page 30 and 31. 10.2, 10.02 will define what the retirement committee does. Uh, and then you go on page 31, uh, E will define the uh, 10 point uh, uh, E will define it to assist to make all other decisions and term determination which provisions of the plan specifically are to be made by the retirement committee. Uh, I don't think the, the uh, plan that uh, Mr. Brennan is saying that uh, the uh, plans are made by you all. First of all, that money, once you put that money in the defined benefit uh, plan, that money belongs to the plan and the participants of the plan. I have stated that so many times, and I don't understand why it's not taken at its face value. You all signed a contract between the city of Dallas, and it's called the 13C Arrangement Agreement. You have a, a CFO who makes decisions on his own. He sent one of his employees to the defined benefit uh, retirement consultant client conference. Lady's not in, the, she's not in the plan, she's not on the committee. What did she go for? I don't understand that. You wasted that, the taxpayer's money. And I have uh, the, uh, I filed a, before I left here, I made a motion and I got approval, a second and a, approval on 7.1 to amend it. Well, Mr. Oliver is telling me it might take 10 years. It didn't take 10 years the first time to amend the plan. Go to the plan. The plan was amended in, 10, uh, in uh, 2002. This is the latest plan amendment. And I can't understand why you haven't moved on it. Mr. Thomas, you told me that you was going to sign off on it, and the fact is, you haven't signed off on it, and it's been four years. The situation that's going on in the Defined Benefit Retirement Committee is a joke, a real joke. This is our money, once you put it over there. One other thing, and then I'm gonna leave here. The fact is, one year, he did not put, he was supposed to put $9.6 million in there. You're supposed to put it, at least half of it in there, by April the 1st. If you read the 13C arrangement, it will tell you that. This past year, the actuary that 
piece of paper that you have, that gentleman is not even an actuary. And, the, uh, and then what happened was the auditor gave his report before the actuary gave his report. That's backwards. I would like to say what my grandmother used to say, but I'm not. It's a shame that I'm sitting there. This is my plan. And I think that there should be a retiree on that board. And from what I'm understanding, there was an agreement at the meeting confer that a retiree would be on the board. But you have yet to put one on there. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for coming this evening, Mr. Harris. Um, our next speaker is Kavane Ward. Good evening, Mr. Ward. Oh, it's Keevan Ward. Pardon me? Keevan. I did the best. I okay. Could. <laughs> okay. Well, basically, I'm here. I just have a complaint against one of the officers. Um, this is his third time harassing me, and um, he just asked for simple information. I gave it to him, and uh, he acted like you know he was out of character. He wanted to take me to jail. So, uh, and also he didn't put his original name on the paperwork. He didn't put his original name on the paperwork. It was two officers. The officer that did the paperwork, he didn't put his name on it. Chief Addison, would you talk to this, to, with this gentleman? Sir, would you see Chief Addison in the back there? Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Uh, now our next speaker is Ms. Margaret Thompson. Good evening. My name is Margaret Thompson. I ride the 553 route with the 554 route on um, every day of the week every other day at 3 10 p.m that bus comes to the Ledbetter station to leave it does not do the complete route i live on pebble shores what it does it gets all the way to treetop and and then tells me i'm not going on pebble shores it is too dangerous it's no it's not no, nobody doing no work on that street, but they really need to do the work on that street from where the bus turns. I have to get off and walk, and I am a disabled. I have a defibrillator in my chest. And some days, I can be able to make that walk on, on treetop, but I get off on wild hunting. But let me be the one to try how I'm going to ride the bus. If I pay my $40 every month, and I get picked up on Pebble Shores and treetop, I want to be dropped back off on Pebble Shores and treetop. I don't think it's fair to wait till you get all the way to my destination and tell me I'm not going up in there. It's not fair to, uh, and when it's all like that every time 310 comes. 3.10 p.m. I hate that. I hate it with a passion. I never, I had, I haven't fought for this bus route. From 2001 to 2004, I was a customer service rep for that community. But it's just going downhill. And this don't make no sense. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Um, Ms. Thompson, <clears throat> excuse me, Ms. Thompson, would you speak with Mr. Maurice Bell? You see him? Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Geraldine McDaniels, Ms. Geraldine McDaniels.
Good afternoon to everyone, as you know who I am. I just have a few issues, but I do want to thank uh, Mr. Thomas and Ms. Faye and the ones that helped me to get some of the things done that I wanted. And I appreciate the board, of course, uh, for me uh, to get some of my benches. Because um, with this osteoporosis or whatever I have, it's hard for me to stand long at the time. But uh, what I'm called, what I'm, con what I'm concerned about tonight is the riding of the buses. And just like that lady said that a night on the 59, that's one of mine too. She is concerned about later service and I'm concerned about uh, it interfering with my church service on you know, weekend and through the week. They have this rush hour bus on the 59, which I don't think is necessary anymore. I think most of those people, especially on weekend, having a rush hour bus uh, uh, is not, most of them retired now. And, and, I, and the four five also. The, 405, which comes right in front of my door, and I have to transfer to the 59. Uh, I have a 30-minute wait, and uh, and also uh, I would like to have that 405 to 45 minutes versus an hour. They took the 59 from meeting at that uh, train station, and so it takes me longer to get home. I have a time getting home from. Uh, when I go to Oak Cliff on weekend, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. And I just want to uh, get better birth service. That's the main issue I have. And I'd appreciate it if y'all would help me do that. So, Mr. Todd, he has said that some of my issues is a has to do with the money. Well, would y'all please do get some of the money, please? So y'all know I've been around 29 years and be my 30 year next year. So thank you. Perhaps you'd like to have another, uh, another conversation with Mr. Plesko, Mr. Todd over there. Yeah, I know him. I, you know I know everybody up to him. Yes, I know that. <laughs> Uh, our next speaker is um, Ms. Sherry Lynn Samuels. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Sherry Lynn Samuels. I came down here a couple of board meetings back and brought some documents. Uh, one document was on proving that the smart drive, where they just cut it on to Nick pick at you and and stuff. I have not got any answers back on that. The document proves itself when I go back, suppose I have one incident that has 51, but only four of them has um, something written on it, like eating or yawning and stuff like that. So I have not got any response from nobody. Then I brought some more documents where I told you all that I'm being harassed by your supervisors and your dispatchers. One supervisor, I consider it sexual harassment because the only time I see him is when I hit my RTT to go to the bathroom. I still have not heard anything from anybody. And I know that the paperwork was passed back down to the people lower than Gary. Okay, they think this is a joke. It's not a joke with me. This is my livelihood, and I want to go home just like everybody else. Do me a favor. Call South Oak Cliff Division and find out what bus I was on this evening from 11.55 a.m. until 6.15 this evening. I hit the emergency button twice. But you know what they do for me when I hit the emergency button? They start talking among each other. Oh, they finna get her now. Something finna happen to her now. See, my daughter came out one time. She called me. She heard a passion of 
cussing me out and clowning. She came out to whoop that passenger. They had the audio on. They heard it all. They thought it was me. They laughing and grinning. But my management staff won't do nothing about it because they will have to chastise your dispatchers and your supervisor. My life is just as important as anybody else that walked this earth. But see, I don't have a spirit of fear. God didn't give me that spirit. And no weapons formed against me shall prosper. So that's the reason why they can't get me on their foolishness because I'm protected by JC, and JC is Jesus Christ. But I went to early AMs for this next markup, and my main purpose is, is to make $5,000 by December to pay a retainer fee for an attorney. Because I refuse to continue to be harassed, and your management know that I am being harassed by your dispatchers and your supervisors, and nothing's being done. There are no other registered speakers. Is there anybody that wishes to speak? That closes the public, uh, that closes the general public comments. Um, we have several agenda items to address. Uh, the first of which, Mr. Wageman, came through your committee for um, distribution of And then item six. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Would you I, I thought you were stopping in mid-sentence there. I apologize. Well, I did stop in mid-sentence, but because I was being okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Mr. Wageman, will you introduce kind I'd of be pleased to Chairman Strauss. Six? We have item number five for the board's consideration. This item was uh, voted on earlier today in our budget and finance committee. It's uh, our annual approval to distribute the proposed fiscal year budget. To our member cities, the city managers and the budget officers of those cities uh, for their review and comment. It passed our committee unanimously. I recommend its approval by the full board now. That, there was a motion made and second. Those in favor, please signify so by saying yes. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Motion carries. Uh, Chairman Strauss, I'd like to move approval of item number six. This is a approval of a contract uh, with the Texas Department of Transportation and the uh, and DART relating to uh, a, a funding agreement to provide $60 million from TxDOT to DART. I move its approval was considered uh, earlier today by our committee and approved unanimously. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wageman. Th there's motion made and seconded. Um, all those in favor signify so by saying yes. 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 Those opposed say no. <coughs> that motion carries. Uh, there are no other agenda items. There are no other public. Whoa. Ms. Gates, there is one more agenda item. There is, Mr. Chairman. Item 7, which is a call for public hearing on March 2016 service modifications. This matter was um, considered by the planning committee members, unanimously approved and recommended to the committee of the whole. It's been through the initial and final review um, of, by the committee of the whole, and I move its approval this evening. Second. That motion made and seconded. Um, all those in favor signify so by saying yes. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. There are no further agenda items. The, um, there are no other speakers. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We love comments. If you don't like the way Dart is handling things, Lay it out for everyone to see. If you like or hate this video, tell us. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, tell us. We even love it when you call. Better yet, like 
or follow us on Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube and get instant notices of all our videos the moment